In this lesson, we'll take a look at differentiation rules for sinusoidal functions. All the normal power rule, product rule, we'll actually do a little quotient rule in the next page too. So we're asked to differentiate each of these following functions. We'll take a look at four, four on this page and uh, three more in the next. So first of all, we're differentiating sine 4x. So the derivative of sine x, remember, is cos x. So the derivative of sine 4x should be cos 4x, whatever this function is here. This has to be the same here. Now we're actually using chain rule here because it's not just sine x, it's sine 4x. So you can think of the 4x as the inside function and the sine x as the outer function, the outside function, because if I'm evaluating this I would go 4 times x, whatever that is, and then I'd take the sine. So that's why the 4x is considered the inside function because it's done first. So uh, for chain rule here, once we differentiate the out outer function, which is what we've done, we would then multiply it by the derivative of the 4x, which of course is just 4. So that's why it's multiplied by 4. Now we don't normally leave the 4 there, this is just a matter of having good mathematical form. So we would normally put the 4 on the left here, so write as 4 cos 4x. And that way, it, 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 uh, somebody doesn't look at it and think, well I'm supposed to multiply that 4 by the 4x and that's 16x, because that's not the same thing. So 4 times the cos of 4x. Now in B, we're differentiating a cosine function. Remember the derivative of a cosine function is a negative sine function. And so, the reason I put the root 7 here is because same as when I'm differentiating and multiplying it by the derivative of the 4x, I put a 4 here. Well, the derivative of root 7x is root 7. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine root 7x and then we multiply it by the derivative of root 7x, which is the root 7 here. So the derivative of negative root 7 sine root 7x. Now for c, we're differentiating sine squared x. Sine squared x same as a sine x function squared. When you have a power of any trig function, we normally don't put the brackets in and we put the power here. So that means the sine function all squared, the sine x function. So we're actually still using chain rule here, our power of a function rule. The 2 comes down in front, and so it be 2 sine x to the first, so we don't normally write the 1 in. And then we multiply that by the derivative of what's in here, which of course is cos x. And so the derivative of sine squared x is 2 sine x cos x. Now, if you remember your trig identities, there is a simpler way to write this, if you remember this. 2 sine x cos x is the same as sine 2x. So the derivative of sine squared x is actually sine 2x. That is a simpler version of the same derivative. Now in D here, we've got two different functions subtracted. So just like differentiating any like polynomial function or anything with a more than a, uh, one term, we differentiate all the individual parts. So uh, the cos cubed x, remember the same as cos x all cubed. So the power of 3 comes out and multiplies by the 4 to give you 12. The only reason there's a negative here is because the derivative of cosine is negative sine. That's why the negative's there. So back to the power part, though. 3 comes down and multiplies by the 4 to give you 12. We subtract uh, 1 from the exponent, so 3 minus 1 is 2. So that's the power part differentiated. And then we multiply by the derivative of cos x. That's the inside function, which, of course, is negative sine x. So there's the sine x, and, of course, I've already put the negative in the front here. So that's the derivative of the 4 cos cubed x. Now, uh, the derivative of 5 sine to the 4th x, the 4 comes down and multiplies by the 5 to give you 20. Uh, again, we're doing power rule here, so that we subtract 1 from the exponent, you get 3. And then you multiply by the derivative of the sine x, the inside function, which of course is cos x. Now, sometimes, and uh, I'll do an example of this here, sometimes we will want to set derivatives to 0, remember to find like local minimum maximum points, for example extreme points and so it's often good to write especially longer derivatives in a fully factored form. So notice that uh, negative 4 divides into both these constants and there's cosine x's and sine x's in both of them. So there's a cos squared x here and a cos x here so we can factor a cos x out, the lower common power. And the same with the sine x. There's a sine x here and a sine cubed x so we can factor a sine x because that's the lower common power. Now, what we get if we factor a negative 4 cos x sine x out is this. Uh, negative 12 divided by negative 4, of course, is 3. Cos squared x divided by cos x is cos x. And if there's just a sine x here and we factor a sine x out, that's why there's no sine x's here. Uh, negative 20 divided by negative 4 is 5. 
sine cubed x divided by sine x is sine squared x. And if there's a cos x, then we factor a cos x out. That's why there's no cos x. There's no cos x is left there. Flipping over to the second page, in E, we're, we're given a product, 3x squared cos x. So we're going to use the product rule here. So the product rule says start with one of the functions, and I'm going to differentiate the uh, 3x squared first. So the derivative of 3x squared is 6x, doing power rule, times the second function, and then plus first function times the derivative of the second. Of course, the derivative of cos x is negative sine x. And the only thing I would do to simplify this is I bring the negative here and be minus 3 x squared sine x. So that's my derivative. Now we can factor a 3x out. That's a common factor. We can factor out of the whole thing. And so if we factor 3x out of 6x, that's 2 uh, cos x. Uh, 3x squared divided by 3x is just minus 1x. And then of course the sine x is still here. For f, we have this g of t function. So again, it's um, a product, so we use product rule. The derivative of sine pi t would be cos pi t times the derivative of pi t. And uh, um, pi is a constant, just like if it was a 2 or a root 7 or something like that. So the derivative of pi t would be pi. So that's the derivative of the sine pi t times the uh, second function. And then plus uh, the first function, the sine pi t, times the derivative of the second. Of course, this is power. So the 4 comes down in front. And then we subtract 1 from the uh, power 4, gets 3, so 4 cos cubed t. And then remember the inside function is the cos t function, so the derivative of cos t would be negative sine t. Now, I'm going to simplify this a bit. The negative and the 4 we'll put right in the uh, front of this here. So pi cos pi t, cos to the 4th t, and then minus 4 sine pi t, cos cubed t times the sine of t. Now there is a cos cubed t um, common factor here. And so if we factor a cos cubed t out, there's still a pi cos pi t. And we, there's power 4 here. We factored 3 of them out, so there's still a single cos t here. And we're factoring the cos cubed t out. So that's what's factored out, really, here. And what's left is the minus 4 sine pi t times the sine of t. So that's the factored form. Now for g here we have a quotient. Of course you can bring the cos x up here and multiply it uh, to the, with a power of negative 1 if you want. But I'm going to use the quotient rule for those of you who have seen quotient rule before. So the quotient rule looks like this. Denominator times the derivative of the numerator. So the derivative of 3 sine 2x would be 3 times and the derivative of sine 2x is cos 2x times the derivative of the 2x, which of course is 2. So we go 3 cos 2x times 2, and the 2 gets multiplied by the 3 to make the 6 here. And then minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of cos x, of course, is minus sine x over the denominator squared. So cos x squared. Now the only thing I would do to simplify this is I would multiply the six this together. The six goes in front. We've got cos x, cos two x, and a negative times a negative three is plus three, sine two x, and of course sine x. And instead of writing bracket cos x bracket squared, I'll write it as cos squared x. So that's my derivative of f of x.